these are the first 10 nodes you need to know, 10 more coming next week, so be sure to subscribe. If you want to see a powerful feature that I've only just realized is in the free version of DaVinci Resolve 2, then stick around to the end as this will make anything you do in the Fusion tab look that little bit more natural and realistic. It's not a long video. Some of the nodes I'll mention will be accessible in the toolbar, and for others, use the shortcut Shift plus Space to search for them. Starting with the background node, this doesn't take anything through it like a normal node, however, is a starting point. As well as displaying plain colors, there are many different gradient options as you can see here. Selecting the colored box gives you color options, and then use the drop down menu here to reveal the other options available to you. See the video in the card and description with more details on backgrounds. The new multi merge node. This node allows you to layer multiple different node outputs on top of each other, choosing things like how they're layered and their positioning. You can see in this list here the different inputs of the multi-merge node. Now by dragging them into an order, you can set which one appears above the other. Below this is the controls for the current layer selected above, allowing you to change the positioning, blending modes and a few other details. See my video in the card taking you through this entire node in more detail. The tracker node. This allows you to track the position of something in the frame. Start by configuring the inner box size as the area to be tracked, and the outer area as the context for the tracker. If you have DaVinci Resolve Studio, just position your tracker or add a point tracker to get these options. You can then add more trackers and manage them here. If you have the DaVinci Resolve Studio version, then you'll have the IntelliTrack and point tracker variants. However, on the free version, it's just the point tracker. Select this button to track everything back and forth before using the operation tab to match the position of anything added as an extra layer to the tracker. Generally, you'll want the match move option here. Now for the multi-poly node. This has a familiar menu layout, with the list of masks at the top and then the controls for the selected one beneath. You can add more masks with the polygon or b-spline buttons below. The polygon mask is a regular mask, the b-spline one makes everything smooth, instead of exactly following the area you specify. To specify this area of the mask, select the viewer window to make the outline, before selecting the first point to finish joining the dots. Watch my full video on this in the card for more information, and look in the description if you're interested in how to use masks to create line animations. The Rectangle node. We're back to some more simple ones now. This is like the multi-poly node I've just shown, except it's only one mask, and can only be a rectangle. This can be useful to get a perfectly geometric mask with similar controls as before, however also with a corner radius option now too. Now for the Text Plus node. This allows you to create configurable text. It acts very similar to the background node, not having connections going through it. You can enter the text here, choosing things like font and styling as well. In the options above, you have many other great things, making everything really nice and editable. The Transform node. Unlike the Text Plus node, connections go through this one as it affects the input. The controls here are reasonably self-explanatory, very similar to what you see in the editor. The main difference here is the ability to be able to choose the pivot point. This means you can customize the spot where all rotation and scaling is centered around. This can be super useful when dealing with off-centered elements. The Media In node. This is a crucial node. Whilst you wouldn't add it manually very often, it is what allows you to have your footage in the node tree. If you drag a clip from the bin, this will be added as a Media In node, or if you open a video clip in the timeline into the Fusion tab, it will also be represented as a Media In node. Now it's the Blur node. This does exactly what it says on the tin, change the blur size and that's about it. If you're looking for a more realistic blur effect and you have the DaVinci Resolve Studio version, you could use the defocus node here instead. And then lastly, the brightness and contrast node. Whilst I would not recommend color grading from the Fusion tab, sometimes making those small tweaks in the node tree can be convenient, so this allows you to control those values as you can see here. That's about it for this node. If you're not sure what all of these things do, I'd recommend just sticking to the gain and contrast sliders. Now the bonus, which is motion blur. Now this isn't a node itself, however an effect on most nodes that allow you to animate the position of something, like the transform node. To do this, go to the settings tab here and be sure to enable the motion blur option. Then tweak the quality and shutter angle controls to get the right look. Watch out for next week's video with 10 more nodes completing the 20 you need to know, and an extra tip that you can apply to anything you do in the Fusion tab.